Los Angeles County includes over 400 neighborhoods. It is a county so sprawling that finding a place that fits you best is daunting. Until now. In this video, I want to break down five of the trendiest neighborhoods. Whether you're a mover or just a dreamer, let's find out which LA neighborhood are you. First, we're headed east to Silver Lake. Silver Lake is a hip and trendy East Central LA neighborhood and often referred to as the Brooklyn of Los Angeles. After having spent some time living in Brooklyn myself, I often find myself relating to the authentic and sophisticated vibe you find here. It is home to creatives, professionals, and even celebrities. And when I think of Silver Lake, I automatically think of walkable, trendy neighborhoods with great coffee shops and farmer's markets. And I'm not wrong. Okay, and I am now at one of Silver Lake's best spots, the Silver Lake Reservoir. Now, there is nothing more East Central, and I won't say East Side, than spending the day walking around a reservoir. It's why it gives me such New York vibes, because when I lived there, I would spend the day just walking around the Central Park Reservoir and even the Hudson and East Rivers, which kind of gives me the same vibe here. Oh, and we got a dog park right over here. The Silver Lake Reservoir is a 2.2 mile loop around the lake and it offers such beautiful views of the mountains and the houses on the hills. I even found a public park at the reservoir which people actually come to read and tan and lay out and listen to live music. I mean, that is just such a city thing to do. Honestly, in LA, there are not a lot of good public parks here, so it's a different aesthetic of people just enjoying the day. Such a cool park, officially called Silver Lake Meadow. If I lived here, I would definitely come here all the time. The average rent cost of Silver Lake is anywhere from $2,000 to $2,600 a month for a one bedroom, possibly even more. But if it fits your lifestyle, Silver Lake may be the perfect place to live with so many good restaurants, coffee shops, nightlife, and nearby landmarks and hikes such as Griffith Park. If you want to live in a real city like New York or London, this may be your perfect neighborhood. The people are funkier and more down to earth, which you can't say a lot of places here in Los Angeles, which is where we're going next to LA's hottest neighborhood, West Hollywood. West Hollywood is known for its high energy nightlife, especially with the LGBT community with some of the most prominent gay bars in the country. WeHo, as the locals call it, is also home to buzzworthy restaurants, shopping, and the classic LA scene. If any place mirrors Instagram the most, this is the one. In the design district, you have Melrose Avenue with high caliber fashion and fancy celebrity hotspot restaurants such as Chicone's and Craig's. Home to the original Alfred Coffee. If you've ever heard the slogan, but first coffee, this is where it originated from. And I got myself an iced lavender matcha oat milk latte because welcome to West Hollywood. A car full of girls just rolled down their window as they were passing by me screaming, are you a vlogger? To which I gave them a thumbs up because Melrose and West Hollywood is such a vibe. It is a place you really just might see your favorite TikTokers, actors, and YouTubers. The average rent cost for a one bedroom in WeHo is over 3,000 a month. It's a desirable neighborhood with convenient access to the trendiest spots in LA, including the most basic white girl hiking, no shame, I love it too, at Runyon Canyon. But easy access to Runyon with some of the best views of the city might just make it worth it. I love you, Runyon.
All right, we are now in my part of town of West LA, West Side, Best Side. I am now in the city of Venice, a chill, funky beach town city known for housing creative professionals and having one of the most famous beaches in the world, Venice Beach. And actually, when I think of Venice, the first thing that comes to mind is birds, which are electric scooters and very popular here on the west side. So I think I'm gonna ride in style to Abikini. Just gotta scan the scooter. With the price of gas these days, this might be my new method of transportation. And aside from birds, the scooters, when I also think of Venice, I think of Allbirds, the shoe brand, which I am wearing right now. So Venice. Venice is similar to Silver Lake in the sense that everyone here is more chill, laid back, and hipster, with the main differences being that people here are gonna wear flip-flops and Allbirds versus the trendy hipster footwear, which I don't really know what that is, so I'll stick to my Allbirds. Not far from Abbot Kinney is, of course, the beautiful Venice Canal Historic District, which gives you a sense of the homes here in Venice. They are beautiful waterfront property, probably the rich part of Venice, but nonetheless, still really chill and relaxed, which you can take to walk to Venice Beach, which is what I'm gonna do right now. Now, the one real main difference between the west side and central LA is that on the west side, people here are beach bums. People that live in central LA, like West Hollywood and Silver Lake, do not come to the beach. It's pretty much beach versus city. What do you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. I'm definitely a beach guy which makes me a West Sider. I already did my time in New York. I just wanna chill out now. We're headed to the second most popular city here on the West Side, Santa Monica. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I love the west side. Everyone is just so friendly here, just wants to live their life and have a good day. That's what happens when you live by the beach and get so much sun. It's like a natural drug. There it is, the beautiful Santa Monica Pier. Okay, Santa Monica versus Venice is kind of like West Hollywood versus Silver Lake, in the sense that Santa Monica is a little more sophisticated and sceny versus the more, way more chilled and laid back Venice. However, they're still pretty similar in the sense that they're still both beachfront cities, still pretty relaxed. Everyone kind of just wants to be by the ocean and not work and go surfing, go to the bungalow, all that jazz. In Venice Beach, you have the more funky and weird Venice Boardwalk, whereas in Santa Monica, you have the Chaotic Pier, which is definitely more family friendly and says a lot about Santa Monica, especially being right next to the Pacific Palisades, which is a really wealthy upper class neighborhood and just a little less down to earth than the weirdness of Venice. Venice is more souvenir driven, Santa Monica is more upscale shopping driven, and definitely attracts a more upscale tourist. Santa Monica is also its own city, but whereas Venice falls in the city of Los Angeles. So they pay different taxes, and there you have it. Okay, and what I love about downtown Santa Monica is that it's its own little small city that is so walkable. Lots of convenience stores, you can go bar hopping, and great shopping. And the downtown district is right next to the ocean, of course. You got that really nice breeze as you're shopping. I would say the only downside is that Santa Monica can be super touristy, especially the Third Street Promenade. I'm gonna get some food here and head over to my final neighborhood. Okay, and I saved the best for last, at least my very biased opinion, because I live here in Culver City. And right now, I am sitting next to the statue of Harry Culver, whom the city is named after. Hello, sir. Thank you for creating this great city. 
What I love about Culver is that it has evolved to be a very trendy downtown district with some of the best restaurants and bars and coffee shops in town. And no, this is not sponsored, but I am the biggest fan of Phil's Coffee, which originated in San Francisco and made its way down to LA. It is my favorite cup of coffee in town. I go there multiple times a week to pick up a cup. And my favorite drink at Phil's is the Tesora. Ah, oh, it's so amazing. Culver City hosts a lot of family-friendly activities, like today is Blooms on the Step, full of live music and chalk drawing. Hi! Culver City is great because it is light on the pretentious people that you might find in <laughs> West Hollywood. I'm probably gonna have to do a whole nother video just on Culver City because I love this neighborhood. I am right outside the Culver Studios, which used to be called MGM Studios, and where The Wizard of Oz was filmed, aka my favorite movie in the world as a child. When they were filming in the 1930s, 124 of the Munchkins stayed at the Culver Hotel, and there are rumors that they completely trashed the place after having wild parties every night. Sounds like a fun film shoot to me. Maybe that's why Culver City feels so homey, because there's no place like home. found my own tree to sit with here in this cute little park off of the main road in downtown. So that about wraps up today's video and I had so much fun exploring these five trendy neighborhoods in LA. There are so many cool ones. These ones are definitely some of my favorites and I want to know which LA neighborhood are you? If you're moving to LA or want to move to LA, which neighborhood would you pick? What fits your vibe the most? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you next time for more adventures.